aging population. A problem that is much discussed in many countries around the world. More and more older people relative to younger people. What's going to be the impact of that on uh, living standards? So again, a, a non-standard question in, in the context of the solar model, but one that's very natural to ask. How will the aging of populations affect living standards, affect GDP uh, per person? Okay, so, so the precise change we're considering in this question is that we have some fraction of the population stop working. Because they're too old. Um, so in your standard solar model, population and uh, labor force are treated as um, identical. Here, we're going to have some fraction of the population get out of the labor force due to retirement. So suppose previously there was no retirement, and then the, the government brings in a, a, a law that says you have to retire when you reach a certain age. That would be the easiest, uh, rather extreme, but that would be the easiest case to consider. So overnight, we go from a case where everyone's working to where people who've gone over the retirement age are allowed to uh, leave the labor force. So what, what effects are that going to have? So we need to think, firstly, um, how do we change the analysis we did when we wrote down the solar model? How do we change the diagram? Do we need to change the diagram? Do we need to um, work with a different diagram? Do we need to shift the production function, change the steady state? We need to answer a whole host of questions uh, like that. So the first thing is to be clear what we mean um, by the labor force. So L, the thing that went into the production function, now just means those people who are working. It doesn't mean the population. Now, there's no unemployment in the solar model, so the entire labor force is working. However, there isn't full participation anymore. The, the population, I'm not going to call that N, some of those are outside of the labor force, they're retired. So I'm going to use L for labor force. I use L because the production function put L as the input, and now we should put as our labor input any of those people who are actually working, not those people who are retired. I use a new letter, N, for the population. <coughs> so the population is going to be growing at very small N. That was our assumption uh, from before. Okay, so let me define uh, P as what fraction of the population participates in the labor force, so L relative to N. the labor force relative to the population. 
that would be like the opposite of what we're going to do here. Here we have all the people who were previously working now start retiring. OK, so is, is that clear? Is that clear what we're going to do? So, as always, my, my great advice to you is, is never make a question more complicated than, than it needs to be, uh, even, if, even if that involves making an assumption that looks a little bit unrealistic sometimes. So, what I'm going to envisage is that the participation ratio is 100%. And then something happens like a law is passed saying if you're over 60, you get to retire. As a result of that law being passed, some people get out of the, get out of the labor force. So the participation ratio drops more or less overnight as a result of that uh, law. Now, of course, in reality, might be more reasonable to think of this changing gradually, but don't make your life more difficult by asking yourself a harder question. The easiest one to consider is usually when these variables help one off change like this. That's what we're going to consider. So let's turn now to how we how we tackle it. We've been using, of course, a solo diagram. To do everything with this solo growth model. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to go on using some version of this diagram. So a production function, uh, a saving line, and a uh, depreciation line. If we're lucky, we'll be able to carry on using this without too many changes. Consistent with the L that's there as the labor input in the production function. 
Saving line is also therefore the same, as long as retirement doesn't change saving rates. It, probably in reality it would, but bear in mind in any model, there's always a set of exogenous variables, things we don't explain, and endogenous variables, things we do explain. Don't start changing other exogenous variables at the same time unless you're asked to do it in the question. So the saving rate here, we treat that as unexplained. I'm not going to adjust that at the same time I change the participation ratio, even though it may be realistic to do so. We don't have a, this is not a model that explains where the saving rate comes from. So we, we can't really say anything deep about what's going to happen to the saving rate. So let's just leave it constant. So production function same, saving rate the same. So neither red, sorry, neither black nor blue lines will uh, be different in this diagram. That leaves the uh, red line. Now, if you look back how we got the red line, where this red line emerged, it was um, it was in the equation, of course where you look at the change in the capital labor ratio, and you're comparing S, F of K, to uh, delta plus N. That's, that, that's why the red line matters. Uh, and if you look back at where we got that equation from, the N here is the growth rate of the workforce, the labor force, not the growth rate of the population. So now we have a little problem here that this N, which before, meant the growth rate of L. Now N means something different. It means the growth rate of the population. Those two things are not always the same. This is where my simplification, that the participation rate changes more or less overnight, is going to help us out a little bit. Because, note the following. Note that L is the participation rate times N. The definition. If the participation rate is stable, which is basically what it will be in all the years after the reform that allows people to start retiring at, say, 60, if the participation rate is stable, the change in, in the labor force is P times the change in the population. Not if P is changing, so not that this, 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 this month the reform becomes um, X force. But at, at all other times, it's the case that change in L is P times the change in N. It follows from that that the growth rate of L is the same as the growth rate of N those times. So in other words, equal to small n. That means, except at this one point here where P changes, I don't need to worry about the fact that N is the growth rate of the population because it's also going to be the growth rate of the labor force. So in other words, once we scale down the labor force by allowing the old people to retire, any subsequent change in the labor force is just going to be driven by what direction the population as a whole moves in. That allows us to use the same depreciation lines, the same red line, depreciation of population growth line as before. So with this reasoning, we've concluded that this diagram as a whole continues to apply, even though some people might be out of the labor force. Which is a great relief to us, because we can go on using it to answer the question. So, let's see how we can use this diagram to answer the question. Do we change the steady state? Do we change the saving line? No. Do we change the depreciation line? We don't change the delta. 
you don't change the growth rate of the population, you don't therefore change this n. We don't change the steady state. So in terms of capital per worker, and output per worker, the economy should have the same steady state post-reform as it did before the reform. Does that mean that nothing happens? Well, what about the actual value of K? This, this small K, remember, is, uh, is capital per, per worker. What happens to the number of workers the month after the, the law comes into, into force, allowing, and not just allowing, but it, it can also be compelling people to retire at 60. Everyone retires at 60 that previously went on working. What happens to the labor force the month afterwards? It's gone down. What's happened to the capital stock, the big K? The number of machines hasn't just um, disappeared. A certain number of machines hasn't just disappeared into thin air between this one and the previous one. So that's more or less the same. So K is treated as constant. L has gone down. So small K has gone up. Transition, you start moving back down. 